Good morning, East Coast Church. Happy Sunday. Welcome to church. Um, I'm really excited because this is the first week of our Real Talk series. Um, this is one of my favorite traditions. It's a summertime tradition of East Coast Church. Every summer, we take a few weeks and we do a Real Talk series where we look in movies and we find deep spiritual truths within those movies. And I love movies, so um, I really love this series. I have a lot of fun with it. Um, every year we kind of put a different spin on it. So like last year we did the Disney edition, right? But this year our theme is the epics. So we are doing epic films this year, and I'm very excited. Um, now, normally when we do this series, we set up a concession stand in the lobby area, um, and we do like free popcorn and uh, drinks and candy and all of that stuff. But sadly, we can't do that this year um, because we are meeting virtually. But that is not stopping our very own Tina from putting a new spin on the concession stand idea. So she's going to be posting a video every Friday night that announces the movie for the upcoming Sunday um, so that you can watch it on Saturday in preparation of Sunday. And she's also going to give us her top concession pick for the week. So this week, Tina's concession pick was Grape Airheads. I feel like she did the grape for me specifically because I know that Tina prefers the red airheads, which is the cherry flavor. Um, but she picked grape airheads this week um, because it's a personal, I mean, it's a personal favorite of mine. So I can't help but feel like she did that just for me. I love grape airheads. So, and in case you missed her announcement on Friday, the movie that we're doing today is The Never Ending Story. The Never Ending Story. <laughs> so if you grew up in the 80s or if you have kids that grew up in the 80s, I know you've seen The Never Ending Story. Um, and I wore this shirt actually for it. Like, it's not a Never Ending Story shirt, but it's a 1981 shirt because I, it just put me in this mood of like 80s nostalgia, right? So, um, just in case uh, you don't know, or like maybe you haven't seen the movie, right? That's okay. Um, I rewatched it this past week, and let me tell you, it is wonderfully cheesy in every way that you would expect from an 80s movie <laughs> so the special effects are are awful um but special effects aside i think the story still holds up actually it's a really good story um and it was a lot of fun to just rewatch that movie after many many years of not seeing it um so just in case you don't know the movie, The Never Ending Story, I'll give you a brief synopsis. So basically, it's a story within a story. Um, so our, we have Bastion, who is this like all-American little boy whose mom has recently died. And Bastion is also experiencing um, a lot of bullying. So he's getting bullied a lot. And between experiencing grief over the loss of his mom and the hard time that he's having with bullying, Bastion spends a lot of time with his head in a book. He uses it as an escape. Um, he uses it as a coping mechanism. He likes to disappear in stories. And so one day we see Bastion running away from his bullies and he's taking shelter from his bullies in a bookstore. And in this little bookstore, it's like a mysterious little bookshop owner in this place with like wall, floor to ceiling books, right? And he finds this really old looking odd book with this like symbol on the cover and it just looks like a very magical mysterious book so this is the book that he chooses to take and read and he takes it home and he brings it up to his attic which is like his safe space he's got his you know cushy little couch and his blankets and everything and he just starts reading the story up in the attic and the story that he's reading is a story of fantasia and Fantasia is this world that's being eaten up by the nothing. And Fantasia is being destroyed little by little, becoming nothing. It's, it's just disappearing. And so Fantasia is ruled by this child empress. And we see Bastion reading the story of Fantasia, the story of this child empress who um, calls Atreyu. Atreyu is this warrior of Fantasia. He's a little boy as well, um, but he is just the greatest warrior in all of Fantasia. So the Empress calls Atreyu and says, you are the one that has to go find the one who can save Fantasia. So we are watching The NeverEnding Story, which is a movie about a boy named Bastion who's reading a story about Atreyu trying to find the one who's going to save Fantasia. And at the end, spoiler alert, but the movie came out in like 1986 or something. So um, 
I don't feel bad for spoiling it. Um, in the end, we discover that the hero that Atreyu is looking for is Bastion himself. I know, right? <laughs> Somehow the reader of the story is actually the hero of the story. And that's the point of the movie, The Never Ending Story. Now, I have a clip to show you. It takes place at the end of the movie when Atreyu realizes that the person that he's been looking for has been with him all along. And so this is the Empress telling Atreyu that the one who can save Fantasia is there with them. So let's watch that clip. doesn't realize he's part of the never-ending story. The never-ending story? What's that? Just as he is sharing your adventures, others are sharing his. They were with him when he was the boys behind the bookstore. But that's impossible! They were with him when he took the book with the orange symbol on the cover, in which he is reading his own story, right now. I can't believe it! They can't be talking about me! What will happen if he doesn't appear? Then our world will disappear, and so will I. How can he let that happen? He doesn't understand that he's the one with the power to stop it. He can't imagine that one little boy could be that important. Me? Maybe he doesn't know what he has to do. What do I have to do? He has to give me a new name. He's already chosen it. He just has to call it out. It's only a story. It's not real. It's only a story. You do what you dreamed, Bastion! Okay, <laughs> so so if you've seen the movie, you're probably cracking up right now, um, like me. And if you haven't seen it, you might still be cracking up, but you are probably thinking, what the heck was that? <laughs> Anyway, so normally we show the actual clips of the movie we talk about, but since we're streaming online, um, there's a difference in copyright laws that we have to abide by. So normally we're allowed to show movie clips um, at church, um, but since we're streaming online, we we can't we have to abide by the, the copy copyright laws, and we don't have copyright over uh, any of the movies that we're going to be doing. So so every week you're going to get a homemade clip of uh, the movies that we're doing. <laughs> So maybe we'll incorporate ways of uh, making you all stars of it, too. So, you know, if you want to have your time uh, as a star of one of our clips, please let us know. Actually, I'm just going to throw that out there. You can email us at pastors at eastcoastcc.org. Um, let us know you want to star in one of our movie clips, and we'll, uh, we'll get you a role to play. <laughs> um, and hopefully we'll have fun all summer just seeing us being a little bit ridiculous. But anyway, um, back to the never-ending story. So in the clip that we saw, we saw Bastion, who was one of Adria's brilliant roles. Um, we saw Bastion realize that the book he's been reading is much more than just a story. Um, more than that, he actually has the power to affect the story. So here's where we start talking about spiritual things. 
So at first, Bastion, um, re so first, okay, yeah, so like I said, Bastion realized that the story he was reading was more than just a story. So now I want to take a look at Luke um, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. If you want to grab your Bibles or your Bible app, um, again, that's Luke 24, 13, I'm going to read 13 to 35. And this happens, by the way, so this, this story that I'm about to read from scripture, it happens on the same day that Jesus' tomb was found empty. So it tells the story of two of Jesus' disciples. Um, these are d followers of Jesus who weren't close enough to be in his inner circle. So they're not like, they're not the apostles, but they are disciples that were familiar with Jesus and his ministry. And um, they are walking down the road and they're talking about everything that's happened over the past few days with Jesus. Um, and it is the same day that Mary went and found the tomb empty, right? So um, let's go ahead and look at what it says. Luke 24, we're going to start in verse 13. It says, now that same day, this again, the same day that Jesus, Jesus' tomb was found empty. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emos, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you only a village, <laughs> excuse me, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what he uh, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us when he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. So Cleopas and his friend were walking down the road. They were talking about everything that had happened to Jesus over the past few days. They were talking about the fact that today was the third day and they knew enough of, uh, of Jewish prophecy to know that the third day was important. This is, this is when the big show was supposed to happen, right? Um, and then they encounter this stranger that they don't recognize, but who actually is Jesus. And uh, they continue walking down the road with this with this supposed stranger, right? And they're having a great spiritual discussion. Um, I imagine it was a very engaging conversation. Um, and uh, so so Jesus is talking to them about scripture and prophecy, and and I'm sure that, that it's just it's just a super engaged time as they're walking down the road. So much so that when it came time to them for them to part, Cleopas and his friends said, "No, come stay with us." Um, so they urge the, the stranger to come stay with them and then at the end of the day they sit down together all of a sudden Cleopas and his friend realize this is Jesus so they had spent most of the day with him and they didn't even realize it they were right in the middle of a resurrection story 
but they didn't know it. How many times have we not realized that we're in the middle of some epic story? And it's easy in hindsight to realize that we're a part of it, but we don't realize it when we're in the middle of it, do we? And, and how many times have we read the Bible and considered it to be just a story? So our Bible actually contains many stories and many books. It's 66 books actually written by a variety of different authors in a variety of languages over a vast time span. And it's all collected in this one like gathering. So the Bible is actually a, a gathering of books. It's not one book in and of itself. And all of these stories, some of them are historical, some of them are poetic, some of them are metaphorical, but all of them are about humanity experiencing God. So this gathering of ancient text, when we read it, we're reading things that other human beings wrote down thousands of years ago about divine encounters. And it's so easy to look at this because it's it's old and it's been ingrained in us that this is a holy text so it's special and it's on some other higher level so sometimes we we read this and we lose sight of the fact that these stories show how god and humankind have been interacting since the beginning of time Time and time again, all throughout scripture, we see this reoccurring theme of good triumphing over evil. We see stories of oppression followed by calls for justice and the pursuit of what's right, followed by triumph and redemption. These are not just someone else's stories, my friends. This is our story. This is the story of all humanity. And we are called to be the heroes of this story, whether we realize it or not. We read stories of the Old Testament prophets, and the Old Testament prophets are constantly speaking out about injustice of the world. They're constantly saying, look, the rich are getting richer, and they're stepping on the backs of the poor who are getting poorer. We hear about God equipping leaders to free whole groups of enslaved people. We read about Jesus who brings a message of inclusion and grace in the face of religious oppression. And we read about Jesus' disciples carrying on that message years after Jesus has left them. But these are not just stories of the past. They are stories of our present. This is the never-ending story. This constant loop of life that is up to us, not just to read the stories and memorize the verses and consider it all good, right? Instead, we should be reading these stories and praying, God, open my eyes to the oppression around me. Who are we excluding? How can I bring freedom to my generation right here and now? It's up to us to take an active role in this story. You know, at the end in that scene that we so wonderfully acted out for you, Bastion had to leave the comfort of his book in the attic. He had to take off the covers, leave his book on the table, fling open the window in front of that really scary storm, and he had to call out into the night his cry, his action that would make him the hero of the story. Sometimes we need to leave the comfort of reading our Bible in a nice, safe, quiet space and step out into the storm and take actual action. So I'm going to challenge you to think about this. What does this look like for you? What are you being called to do? We're all being called to something a little different. I'm not going to sit here and say that you should be called to do X, Y, and Z, but I think you know in your heart what you're called to do right? Like, like uh, the Empress says, Bastion, why don't you do what you dreamed? What are you being called to, right? And why aren't you doing what you've dreamed? And what's it going to take for you to face the storm and step out and do what you always dreamed? You are a part of this story. It is happening now, just like it happened then, just like it happened in the Old Testament, just like it happened in the New Testament. It's happening right now in 2020. It's the constant story. So how are you going to be a hero of this story? Will you pray with me? Oh God, um, we just thank you for this story that we're a part of. Um, thank you that you equip us and you call us to be a part of it and that we get to be an active part of life. 
the life all around us. So we don't just let life happen to us, but we can, we can make a difference and we can be the hero of our own story. Um, and, and Lord, I just pray that just like Cephas and his friend or Cleopas and his friend, um, as they were walking along the road, Lord, and they didn't realize at first that you were with them, but eventually they did. I pray that you open our eyes to you, to Jesus all around us, Father, because we know that you are there. Scripture says, in you we live and move and have our very being. You are all around us. Please open our eyes to the Jesus around us. And, and give us the courage, Lord, to step out of our comfort zones and to take an active role in whatever work is going on around us that you are doing. Help us to be a part of this story, Lord, and it is in your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you guys for joining us today um, for week one of the Real Talk, the epics. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. And next week... Adria will be doing a movie that I love as well. Um, stay tuned because on Friday we're going to let Tina announce what that movie is. And um, yeah, I uh, hope that you have a good, great week and a great, I hope that you've been having a great uh, holiday weekend that you're all staying safe. Um, I don't think I had any announcements. I probably should have shared that at the beginning, except for that, um, if you want to do a This Is How I Worship video, you can send that to pastors at eastcoastcc.org. Um, again, that's just uh, any video showing us any way in which you worship. We'd love to feature you um, on that series. And or if you want to take part in acting in one of our movie clips, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, please reach out to us if you need anything. We haven't been able to meet together in a while um, in person. I know that we uh, were able to meet virtually, but sometimes that that just, you know, falls by the wayside. But but we are here for you still. Um, so if you need prayer, if you need to talk, if you just miss your friends, uh, feel free to reach out to us, me, Adria, uh, pastors at eastcoastcc.org, any of those. Um, and we are here for you and we love you guys. And um, oh, if you if you would like to give to what we have going on here at East Coast Church, um, I, I encourage you to do so. You can just text any dollar amount to 84321 or visit our website at eastcoast.church and there's information there about giving. Um, so I just, I love you guys and thank you and i hope you have a great week so at this point when i like this is the crying part right yeah this is the crying part all right so you need to have tears right yeah so you might as well just splash it all over your face yeah i know because this is like bastion please okay i'm ready are you ready do you want me to do it no i, I prefer to splash myself okay i can do it okay fine you do it okay i'm, I'm gonna get ready okay. okay all right are you sad i'm so sad are you sad bastion Come on. Please.